Namaste. Hi. Our energetic side is immense. It keeps growing, developing, manifesting. And through the years of my practice, I've encountered and learned a number of them. And all my teachings come from those realizations. I'm not a theoretical person. I would feel a certain sensation. I will grow that sensation, apply that in my practice, later to find out there's actually a term or a name to that particular technique. And that's how I'm able to share with you, you know, the lessons in a more practical, real life experience or sense. When we practice Hatha Yoga, at first, seemingly in its superficial value, yeah, the techniques are manageable. Yeah. You might want to describe those techniques as basic. Yeah. For example, this one. Who would have thought that this position could awaken your energetic anatomy? By looking up there and allow your eyes to passively rest on that dark spot between the eyebrows, whether internal or external, you can awaken silent centers in the brain. If you are just a beginner, those things will not happen. That's why we can categorize on its superficial value, Hatha Yoga is basic. There's no handstand in Hatha Yoga. There's no headstand. Yeah. The physical techniques are pretty straightforward, and most of them are done sitting. Yeah. But the essence happen when you practice them over and over and over again, in conjunction yeah, with the other observances not written in the books. So there is a progression behind what we see. And then those are like the, actually the essence of my teaching. If you look at my tutorials, most of them are about opening the joints, loosening stagnation, breathing exercises, safety. Not to mention those things that I enjoy doing. Yeah, arm balancing, active hip openness, even weight training yeah. can help you. So the wise give us the, the techniques, but what happened before that is kept hidden. And then only you learn that from your teacher. Okay, for example, this one I will be sharing with you. The pelvic floor has a direct connection to the pituitary gland inside the brain and vice versa. The pituitary gland, in yoga we call that the Ajna Chakra, has a direct link to your pelvic cavity, to the pelvic floor. The muscles and the nerves attached to your perineum, the Muladhara Chakra. Why so? The three fundamental nadis, Ida, Pingala, Shushumna, and then even this, when you read at your yoga texts, you may wonder, oh, do they really exist? Yes, they do exist. They have their origin at the Muladhara Chakra, actually the Kanda Nadi. Right? And as they make their way up to the body, they branch out in three major channels, right, left, and center. And they again intersect in the pituitary gland, just right above the top of the spine, where the base of the brain meets the spine. And then sitting down up there is the Ajna Chakra the pituitary body. And then they meet again there, they intersect again inside the brain, and then from there, they will release the energy to energize and open the dormant centers, leading to higher absorption. Okay. So techniques, therefore, that work on those deeply hidden channels in the pelvic cavity, as well as stimulating the Ajna Chakra, can lead to high energy absorption. All right. For example, Gomukhasana, the position of the cow faced. Ajvini Mudra, 
yeah, the rhythmic contraction and the relaxation of your pelvic cavity, as well as holding that contraction yeah, while meditating upon or sending your energy upon your pituitary gland by your practicing techniques of the following. Nabhu Mudra, the sealing of the surface of the tongue against the heart palate, and then breathing the Ujjayi Pranayama, and at the same time, practicing eye techniques. Shambhavi Mudra, whether internal or external. When you combine these various techniques all in one, you're able to connect those points powerfully. Okay? And there are levels, actually. Sitting in the Gomukhasana, for example, and then contracting and relaxing the perineum or the pelvic floor, and at the same time breathing the Ujjayi, Nabhu Mudra, send your awareness there, and then take a nourishing breath in, and then clip, holding the breath within, while your optic muscles magnetize the brain, drop the jaw, relax the gums, loosen your lips, you can right away feel the connection. Of course, if your body is blocked because you're just starting to practice, probably you need more time to open the physical body. But if you've been practicing yoga asana already and pranayama, it's quite easy to feel the relationship, the connection. Like that's the center of the gravity and your spine will just lift upright on its own without you forcing it. You don't actually have to engage the bandhas so strongly within. All you need to do is to contract, hold that mouth contraction like your pelvic floor jumps up and then you lift your optic muscles up together with your Nabhu Mudra lifting yeah, the upper region of the spine up and the Ujjayi breath pulls or draws the energy from the Manipura to the higher chakras that in effect can awaken the inner brain centers. Okay. That's the basic. And if you've been practicing yoga for about a couple of years, that is a safe, progressive technique you can apply. Now, there is actually an advanced version or advanced practice, depending on your level. And then this is where it becomes a bit yeah, tricky and sensitive. Bastrika Pranayama, in conjunction with Ashvini Mudra, good, and cross leg position. You don't have, in Bastrika Pranayama, you can apply this the Gomukhasana, you can apply the Sukhasana, half Padmasana, Padmasana, Siddha Yoni, or Siddha, Siddhasana Pranayama or uh, asana, and then breathing the bastrika pranayama. Because bastrika pranayama quickly and swiftly and powerfully awakens the entire cranial system. Not to mention, yeah, it produces the high level of electricity inside the body. You are brimming with this force, yeah, and then you lift yeah, your own apana up to the brain, and this could powerfully send the uh, sensation up to the brain. The bastrika, the bellows breath. <sighs> if you've been practicing that already, yeah, after your last uh, repetition, take a long breath in. Contract, pull the core in, pull the muladhara up, yeah, the mulabandha, ashvini, and then just let your eye or arms relax and then let your shoulders relax, and then lift your optic muscles there. You will feel the sudden yeah, sealing of the energy within, and then you can lift your energy up. Although this is quite sensitive. I've experienced yeah, um, a couple of episodes that my heart stopped 
really. So this has to be taken seriously and with care. And then don't do this for the sake of feeling it or investigating. You have to grow this. This could be powerful and it could overwhelm your nervous system. So I don't recommend you practicing that unless you're guided. But yeah, for me to mention that there are you know, levels and stages to go through while developing your energetic anatomy. All right. So what do we gain out of this practice? Yeah, you might ask, what is this for? Of course, as Hatha Yoga practitioners, the aim is to awaken you know, our subtle centers so we can meditate in their deeper essence you know, or feeling or sensation or manifestation. Well, for health, you can apply that as well yeah, to increase your energy level, yeah, to nourish and then purify your nadis. Yeah. There are healing effects to this uh, techniques, depending, of course, on the level and your ability. But generally, we practice this to prepare us for the meditation later on. Okay. So the intermediary chakras, for example, the Shwadishtana, the Manipur, the Anahat, Vishuddhi, yeah, they may not be as active anymore, including the bandhas, in the advanced stages of these techniques I'm sharing with you. When I practice Bastrika, yeah, I just sit in the Sukhasana, this one, yeah, and I practice it, the Bastrika Pranayama, yeah, for yeah, a number of repetition, depending on my program, depending on how I feel for that particular session, but in between uh, 30 and 40 repetitions, and I do only three sets, and that is very powerful already. And after that last repetition, <sighs> I'm gonna take a long breath in, <sighs> perform yeah, the Ashvini, and I'll just let the upper back relax, lightly nodding the head to the chest. Sometimes my head will involuntarily flip up. Yeah, I can't help it because of the intense energy, but I know I can sustain it because I've been through it many times in the past and working progressively on this. Yeah. And now with experiences, uh, not really uh, swooning, but like the breath separates from the body. I am breathing Naturally, I am breathing autonomically, but side by side, the breathing, like the surface of the body, I am breathing energetically. Like I could separate my inhalation and my exhalation from my energy rising up. And this requires, of course, a mental and energetic mechanism to control and separate between your conscious and your subconscious identity or nature or elements. Yeah. And then this could, in effect, awaken the brain center step. And once the body has restored, I would just lie down in the Shavasana and for a number of times, this has led me to absorption. Yes, so why I am sharing these principles with you because you've probably been feeling this already in your practice it's just that you don't have the resources to find out yeah but yes yeah only practice will allow you to understand what's written in the books all right oh simple hatha yoga simple you just cross the legs and do this and do that of course if you're just starting with your practice you won't even feel the energetic benefit yes the physical body is working but the essence might still be too early for you to attain. Therefore, all right, how simple the techniques are given by your teacher, grow them. Really grow them until they become you. Yeah, that's it. When you become the technique, you less think about the technicalities and the methods, and then it becomes natural. And then there's a time that all of these subtle components related to that particular method is felt and will appear. Thank you for listening. I'll see you in the next one. Namaste. Bye-bye.